Okay. Yeah. Thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, thanks for hosting us. And uh, yeah, today I was going to speak a bit about uh, opportunities in on-chain derivatives. So just a bit about myself first. Um, I'm alumni of the University of Liverpool and the University of Nottingham. Studied uh, economics and econometrics. And then through studying economics, become interested in uh, monetary economics and trading. And then, yeah, just to sum up, I'd call myself a crypto enthusiast, uh, open source maximalist, and uh, I'm a content writer also at Perpetual Protocol. But yeah, that's enough about me. Um, let me get into the main topic of the talk, uh, which is opportunities in on-chain derivatives. So here's the agenda for my talk. So these are the topics I'll be covering. Um, just an introduction to on-chain derivatives. Uh, what is Perpetual Protocol? Uh, why you may want to use Perpetual Protocol? A bit about a trader's journey, uh, how passive traders can benefit from Perpetuals. And then also I thought it'd be useful, maybe some tips on joining a DeFi project. Um, maybe if you're looking for employment in, in that sector. And then also a bit about the future of on-chain derivatives. So what on-chain derivatives? So Derivatives are contracts that derive value from, from an underlying asset and they're priced of some function of the, as the, of the spot price of the asset. So derivatives should be closely in line with the price of the underlying asset. So different examples are futures, perpetual futures, uh, options, and then there's also exotic derivatives, which one example is like power perpetuals. And we'll see a bit more about that in the next slide. Um, so they're on chain because trades are settled, settled on the blockchain and this brings various benefits. So um, it's completely transparent. So it makes market manipulation much easier to detect and embezzlement is not really possible unless like the dev team really want to be caught red handed. And also you're removing the need to trust third parties. So there's no need to trust like a custodian of your assets or trust a group of people. You're basically trusting the code of the smart contracts. And then another benefit is um, composability. So it's not true for all um, perpetual DEXs, but composability basically is the property where um, anyone can like build products on top of your protocol. So think about um, like a derivatives exchange, then people could be building like vaults or you know alternative front ends and, and that kind of thing on top of the protocol. And then another benefit is it's relatively easier to get started because you just need some assets, um, a wallet, internet connection and some trading knowledge and there's also um better uptime as compared to cex's if you notice like when there's big market moves uh sometimes the centralized exchanges just just go down and you can't use them and they're not available but um with on-chain derivatives it's on the blockchain so it's con constantly running like 24 7. and then the last one as well um is like the community becoming the owners of the exchange so through holding the project's token or through joining like a DAO, you, basically the idea, the ideal is that the community becomes the owner of the exchange and it's not like a centralized exchange where it's just benefiting a small group of people. So that's a bit about on-chain derivatives. Um, here's like a snapshot of the on-chain derivative landscape. So I say a snapshot because not every single project is covered here, but like just the main ones that I thought about. and the maybe the most successful one so far. So on one hand, you have perpetual futures, which is it's kind of like the simplest derivative product. Um, so with options and power perpetuals, the payoff is uh, nonlinear, but with perpetual futures, the payoff's linear. So that means uh, one dollar change in the price of a perpetuals, a perpetual futures contract it will lead to a, an approximate one dollar change in your P&L as a trader. Whereas options and power perpetuals, they're a bit more complicated. So a $1 change in the underlying contract uh, means you get a more than $1 change in your P&L. So here we can see perpetual futures. Uh, some of the leading ones are Perpetual Protocol, DYDX, Quentar, GMX, Drift, and Gains Network. And then for the options there are Dopex, Lyra, Hedgic, and Premier. And then power perpetuals, uh, we have Open, an O1 exchange. So on open, you can trade a derivative contract, which is a power perpetual that allows you to get access to uh, exposure to the price of Ethereum squared. So if, if Ethereum goes up by, say, $200, then um, 
your your P and L will go up by much more than that because the underlying asset, the function is uh, basically the price squared. And then on O one, they have a similar power perpetual, but for Solana, the Solana asset. So I've talked a bit about on chain derivatives. So now I'll just go into like what is perpetual protocol. So basically, we offer fully on chain perpetual swaps uh, with up to ten x leverage. Uh, so far, since the inception of version two, which was November 2021, we've facilitated almost $17 billion in unincentivized trading volume. So that screenshot there is from June Analytics. And then, yeah, you can see it's like 16.7 billion um, in trading, all time trading volume. And then another main point is that Perpetual Protocol is built permissionlessly on top of Uniswap v3. So it functions very similarly to Uniswap v3, except there's also leverage as well which is one of the main differences. So currently uh, there's 18 markets, 18 different markets available. And uh, one of the cool features is the multi-collateral feature, which was released last year. So that allows you to use um, Ethereum or wrapped Ethereum, uh, OP token, USDC and USDT as collateral assets. Uh, we're built on the optimism rollup, so that makes it very cheap and fast uh, to trade completely on chain. And then perhaps one of the most important points is that Perpetual Protocol is open sourced software. So what, what our aim is, is to build like trust, trustless financial products for everyone. So, you know, we're not just building for a certain group of people. Um, we're, build, we're building for everyone and want to, you know, really promote like financial inclusion, access to, um, uh, to, to new investment products that are open to everyone. So here, here's basically, I'm just going to run through like a trade example, like what happens on the platform when you make a trade. Um, so someone will come in, let's say they deposit some USDC, they deposit $100 and then that collateral is placed in the vault. And then basically the clearing house, um, due to the, to the rules of the protocol, you can mint up to like 10 times your collateral value. So if you deposit $100, you can mint up to $1,000 worth of VETH or VUSD. So these are virtual tokens which can only be traded on PERP, but they're placed in um, like a Uniswap V3 pool. So basically the, the virtual tokens represent your derivative position. So the next step, say someone wants to open a long position, right? So let's say the price of Ethereum is $2,000. So this diagram was made a while ago. The price is a bit lower now. But um, let's say they want to open a long position of 0 0.25 ETH. So what happens then is that they put up $100 as collateral in USDC and then the clearinghouse mints $500 worth of VUSD tokens for the trader. And then those VUSD tokens are swapped in the AMM, which is basically a Uniswap V3 pool used exclusively uh, for PERP. You can't trade these tokens outside of PERP, they're just within the protocol. And then the VUSD is swapped for v, um, v Ethereum, basically virtual Ethereum. And then it stores the cost basis, um, the, co the cost basis of the virtual ETH. So then so virtual USD is added to the pool and then virtual ETH is removed from the pool and then the clearinghouse basically manages um, that virtual ETH for you and that's your position basically. So that's representing your long position. So then let's say the price of Ethereum goes up by $500. The traders made some profit, they want to they wanna close the position. So when they initiate close position, which is a function, um, like they're called a smart contract. Basically, the, the virtual ETH is deposited back into the pool. And then in return, they get some virtual USD, uh, USD tokens in return. And then those um, virtual USD tokens are burnt. And then the cost basis is set to zero for that trade because the trade is closed now, it's finished. So then Alice's PNL, um, the trader who deposited earlier, is basically. Um, their PL is the uh, v virtual USD tokens they receive minus their cost basis. So there's an accounting system going on in the protocol which you know tracks the cost basis of all traders and all makers as well. And then um, that USDC is placed into the vault by the clearinghouse, and then um, the trader can remove their collateral and their PL as well. So that's just a quick overview of how it works. So now I'll get into um, why you may want to use perpetual protocol. So the main use case is for uh, active and passive crypto traders. So you can 
acquire leverage without going through a custodian or trusting a third party. And then I'll just briefly go along, um, go over the difference between active and passive traders. So traders want to express their market views by going long or short. So active traders, they may long or short with leverage using derivatives, or they may day trade or swing trade spot markets. Whereas passive traders, you know, they're a bit more relaxed. They just want to, you know, they just want to earn, earn a return. Maybe they just buy and hold, or maybe they want to do like a delta, delta neutral strategy where, you know, they don't want exposure to, to the, the price of the underlying assets or price of any cryptocurrencies. So being, being an active trader, you know, it's, it's quite difficult. Like most people probably want to just be like a passive trader, like just, just earn a yield or earn a return without much work. But um, I read this in a book by um, Dr. Bill Williams and the book's called Trading Chaos. So this guy is known for applying complexity theory to trade to the practice of trading. And in the book, he talks about um, three stages in a trader's journey. So the first stage is like constantly losing money, right? Because, um, you know, you, you, you haven't you haven't got enough experience in the market. Maybe you're just like going all in, going all in, like you're playing a poker game, but you don't know what you're doing. Or uh, you're FOMOing or you're buying tops and bottoms, you know, the list goes on. But then after a while, after you've built some experience uh, and you're a bit more familiar with the market, you move to the second stage, consistently not losing money, which means, you know, you're, you're making profitable trades, but you're just breaking even. Maybe, you know, you need to work on your risk management or you haven't found your edge or you don't stick to your plan, so on and so forth. But then the final stage is uh, consistently making money, right? So, you know, you've honed your edge, uh, you've got good risk, risk management, and you, you know what kind of trading setups you want to take and which ones work, and, you know, your, your wins outweigh your losses, basically, consistently. So the problem is, going from step one to step three, um, it could take a while because you're going to need experience in the markets to become profitable as an active trader. And then also some other questions to consider as well, if you really want to pursue like active trading, um, are you going to be discretionary or take a more systematic or programmatic approach? Um, do you want to take directional bets or non-directional bets? Um, do you want to focus on fundamentals, technicals or sentiment? Um, how, how much time do you have to dedicate to it? So, you know, if you haven't got a lot of time, maybe you'll be a position trader. You just look at the daily and weekly charts and take those setups. Or maybe you've got loads of time on your hands and you want to be a scalper where you're looking at like five minute, 15 minute charts and getting in and out really quickly, maybe like less than half an hour for, for each trade. And then also um, it's about building rele relevant knowledge. So the trading know-how and then also like the crypto landscape and also the news flow as well. So these things are quite important, especially if you want to be trading on the lower time frames or you want to be more active. So... One of the, the big part of the work that we do as well on our marketing team is that we want to support traders along their journey um, with education. So two ways we do this is through our blog posts. So you can find our blog on Mirror and on YouTube as well. So and then also like through conversations with with our community on Discord, Telegram, uh, Twitter updates and so on and so forth. So. It's just a few a few examples of some of the educational content we put out. So it, it ranges very like for loads of different topics. So it could be like technical analysis explainers. It could be like trading education pieces, uh, fundamental outlooks of the crypto market, or even like how to use DeFi tools to like find alpha as well and so on. And also we have this thing um, at Perp where we, we encourage our team members to share knowledge with each other on. Um, Maybe topics that might be difficult to understand or or quite new. So what we do, we have this thing called brown bag. So uh, it rotates between all the team members, and we we share our knowledge on a on a particular topic. Um, so here are some examples from recent times. So one of our team members hosted one on Curve Stablecoin, explained how it worked, like done a deep dive into it. Um, another one was about Dank Sharding, and then another one was like about a DeFi protocol called Arakis Finance. But then we also record these and then we put them up on YouTube for everyone else to um, to watch as well. And then they, they can learn about it as well. So, yeah, for the next bit. So I've spoken a bit about active trading and the trader's journey, but maybe not everyone wants to be an active trader. Um, maybe it's too much work or 
maybe it's just something you're not interested in, but um, yeah, so some people might just want to hold and just earn a return, not bother with the day-to-day -day fluctuations and become more of like a passive trader. So in the next part, I'll talk a bit about how perpetual futures can help uh, passive traders or investors, basically. So one way is constructing a portfolio in a more capital efficient way. Another way is hedging against your existing holdings or long short strategies. Another way is to like um, invest in, in the token of the underlying perpetual deck. So pretty much all DEXs have their own token. They have some sort of program where you can um, earn rewards or earn a share of the fees um, by owning or staking that token. And then finally, um, investing in structured products that use perpetuals as a base layer as well. So yeah, if you don't, if you're not really interested in active trading, here's like four ways that you can uh, still use perpetuals with much lower risk to, to, to earn some money basically. So the first one, so imagine, you know, you want to build a 50-50 portfolio of Bitcoin and ETH. Let's say um, you start with 5,000 uh, pounds, just assuming that the Bitcoin price is 18,000 pounds and the Ethereum price price is 1,000 pounds, then if you buy those assets at, on the spot market, you get around 0.14 and 2.5 ETH. But you can also use uh, perpetual contracts to have the same exposure as that spot trader, but in a more capital efficient way. So if you exchange 5,000 uh, pounds to USDC on Optimism, you get around $6,000 with the current exchange rate. But then you can deposit $3,000 to PERP and long 0.14 and 2.5 Bitcoin. So here you're leveraged uh, 2x with the same exact portfolio and same price exposure as the spot trader, but you have $3,000 left over, right? So it's important to note also that both of these approaches, like if you want to buy a spot or if you want to construct a portfolio using perpetuals, they have their own trade-offs. So the spot trader can actually take custody of those assets and they truly own those crypto assets, right? But the downside is that the exposure is limited. They can only buy what they have the money for. There's no leverage, right? But for a perpetuals trader, the downside is that they don't own the, um, the underlying assets since the positions are represented by the derivative, uh, derivative token, the virtual token, basically. And also there's a risk of liquidation. So here in this example, I've said leverage 2x because basically um, to be liquidated on with that level of leverage, you'd need like a price drop of around 50%. So at current prices, it's, it's probably unlikely that, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum is going to fall another 50%, although it's still possible. But yeah, the, the risk is a lot lower than if you went in more highly leveraged, say 3x, 4x, 5x or so on. So yeah, perpetuals can be a good option to create a crypto portfolio in this way and uh, reduce that cost of having exposure to the market as compared to buying them outright. So the second use case would be um, hedging against existing holdings. So let's say you, you chose to buy some spot assets like the spot trader instead of, you know, constructing a portfolio. And let's say you're holding or you're staking some ETH, right? So when the ETH price increases or you notice like the market's getting frothy or you notice some signs of euphoria, or you believe the market's overvalued and so on and so forth, you can use perps to go short and basically hedge your holdings. So in this example, I'm going to assume that someone's staking eight ETH in a rocket pool mini pool, um, which is going to be, re I think it's going to be released at the end of the month where you can become a stake with only eight ETH. Normally you need 32 ETH, right? But then if you deposit some collateral to perp or any other perpetual decks, you can then short eight Ethereum, yeah? And then any, any losses from the state teeth or unrealized losses from state teeth. So let's say it's at $2,000 and then it drops sharply to 1,300. If you've put a short position on when the price was uh, $2,000, then you're basically, basically locking in those gains, right? Because the profits of the short position are going to cancel out the unrealized losses on your state teeth. And then if someone's staking you, obviously they want to, they don't want to unstake the, or there's a withdrawal queue anyway, but if, if they don't want to unstake, uh, because they don't want to give up those future rewards um, because they're going to get rewards from staking. And then this is basically known as a synthetic dollar position, right? Because you don't hold um, US dollar, but your holdings are structured in a way where it's equivalent to holding USD or fiat. 
So if you short eight ETH and you, you've got eight ETH staked in Rocket Pool, then you know it's delta, delta neutral. You're not you don't have any exposure to the price of ETH now. So the only downside of uh, using perps in this way is that uh, there's something called a funding rate. So the funding rate keeps the price of the derivative contract or the virtual token in line with the price from uh, Chainlink, uh, Chainlink's Oracle feeds. So if the funding rate is consistently or deeply negative, then that means short position, anyone with a short position will incur fees which accrue to the traders that have long positions. Whereas if the funding rates are positive, then any short positions will earn money as well um, on top of any profit that you make from the price movement. So yeah, another kind of, uh, I suppose like a, another type of strategy that's quite, quite similar is a long short strategy. So yeah, instead of staking ETH, let's say you deposit some wrapped ETH to a yield aggregator such as Yearn Finance or Repo Farm. So yield aggregators can give you a return on your on your assets from an automated strategy. So currently on in, on Repo Farm, um, the APR for wrapped ETH is about 7.7%. So you could deposit some wrapped ETH into that strategy and um, earn, earn money from the yield aggregator, right? But then you can also hedge that risk, um, like hedge against market risk by shorting ETH, similar to the previous example, um, using perpetual futures. So you're basically remaining delta neutral, you don't have exposure to the price, and you're extracting that yield offered by the yield aggregator without taking on market risk. And then as I mentioned before, you can earn additional yield because if the short position, uh, because of your short position, if the funding rate is positive, because you'll Traders that are long will be paying traders that are short, and then you'll you'll receive some of that, um, some of those funding payments. And yeah, this setup is basically known as a long short strategy. So the third way I spoke about was um, get you know get getting involved with the project by becoming a token holder. So perpetual dexes they they all have some sort of staking or reward program if you if you hold their token or stake their token. Uh, perpetual protocols version of that is called Lazy River. So it's called that because it's just like an easy way to earn a passive stream of income. And in a nutshell, it's basically a fork of Curve's tokenomics. If you're familiar with um, Curve, you know they have a vote escrow token. So you basically, you can lock your token for up to four years. And the longer you lock it up for, the more um, VE, CRV you receive and the higher share of the platform's fees you'll receive because on Curve, 50% goes to VR, uh, VE, CRV holders. But for PERP, it's slightly different. The maximum lockup time is 52 weeks, so it's one year. And then in return, you receive vote escrowed PERP. And then basically what happens is that snapshots of, of V PERP balances are taken every Thursday uh, for the fee distribution. So 15% of the trading fees are distributed to uh, V PERP holders every week. So just a bit more about that. Um, so since launching in uh, Mid-December, we've had 10% of the total supply of tokens locked, so that's in less than three months. So this screenshot is also from June, it just shows how many tokens are locked. And yeah, that dashboard tracks all the stats related to um, to the PERP staking program. And there's also on June a VPERP calculator as well, so you can estimate the rewards. Um, you can earn the lock in PERP. And then this chart basically just shows the unlocks by time. So how long have people locked the tokens for? So most of the, uh, most of the tokens are locked for nine months or more. So that makes sense, right? Because they want to they wanna earn a higher share of the fees. So um, the more tokens you locked and the longer you lock them for, the higher your VPERP balance will be. And the higher your relative uh, share of the VPERP supply is, the higher, um, the, higher the fee, uh, the higher the proportion of fees that you you earn, basically. So here's just some more stats. Um, so in roughly three months, the protocols paid out over a quarter of a million dollars to V perp holders. And you can see here, like the, the APR over the past four weeks is about 9.14%. And that's in USDC only, because uh, we also incentivize people to lock up their tokens with, with um, perp rewards as well, where just over $160,000 worth of tokens have been rewarded to um, V perp holders. And then basically, yeah, so the, the reason why we adopted Curve's model is that 
it kind of aligns the incentives of the token holders with the the long term success of the protocol, right? Because if people are locking up their tokens, they earn a share of the trading fees that generate on the platform. So it's in the token holders' interests to drive more volume to 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 the platform, right? So the more tra the trading volume that token holders um, can bring to the protocol by introducing traders or making use of our referral program or promoting on social media and so on, uh, the more they benefit because higher fees means higher payouts for them every week, right? So then I'll go on to the the fourth way where passive traders can really benefit from perpetuals. So this is to do with structured uh, structured products and vaults. So I'll go through a few examples. So the first one is Brahma Phi, uh, Brahma dot Phi. So basically, this is a principal protected vault. So that means wherever you deposit, um, you're going to get back at least what you deposited. And basically what they do is put stables to work in curve and convex to earn some yield. And then the yield that is earned is used to take on derivative positions on Lyra, an options platform, and Perpetual Protocol. So this vault is pretty low risk and under the hood, um, you're actually using on-chain derivatives um, to, to generate a return on, on your stables. And then another one is the Tea House LP vault. So this is one of our partners and they built an automated liquidity provision strategy for PERP. So it's an easy way for, for anyone who may not be familiar with like providing liquidity on you sort of v free. They just basically deposit to the vault and then they can earn a share of the trading fees and our token rewards. And then um, with this vault, but with this vault, there is a maximum drawdown of 50%. So this vault is more like a high risk, high reward um, kind of vault. So you can earn quite a lot, but but the risk is quite a high risk as well because um, Providing liquidity on AMMs can be can be quite difficult as well. So yeah, that's that's something to keep in mind. And then the last vault I wanted to mention was um, Hot Tub. So basically, this is our first set of vaults built by Perpetual Protocol. So basically, what what it's doing is utilizing an arbitrage strategy to generate yield in ETH and and USDC with minimal risk. So you may not you may not know, but um, Optimism basically there's there's no MEV on optimism because the mempool is like private. So there's a big opportunity for for people to like execute arbitrage strategies and uh, generate some profit from from that because you can't get front run, you can't get back run on optimism. And yeah, the idea behind that is that arbitrage is is relatively low risk compared to pretty much all other trading strategies, but the obstacle is that people need to have the knowledge, like first of all, they need to have the trading knowledge, but then they also need to have the coding knowledge to know how to build arbitrage bots. And then basically what Hot Tub is doing is just like building that for, for everyone so they can actually, you know, get some alpha from that and then deposit their funds into that and then an arbitrage strategy is all made for them and then they can take advantage of that and earn a return. So that's due to be launching uh, very soon. Um, the other two are actually They've been around for a while actually, so you can actually use them today, but the hot tub is, is something that's upcoming. So th that's not really the only thing that we'll be working on. So at PERP, we're also researching like other vaults. So there could be, so hot tub is non-directional. So it doesn't really matter which way the market is going. Um, you can still earn a return because arbitrage works no matter whether the market's going up or down or sideways. But we're also researching other vaults um, some that may be directional, so maybe you want to take on a directional risk, like a bullish or bearish Ethereum vault. And yeah, we're looking just to really like open up and uh, democratize other on-chain strategies and uh, just make these more accessible to people. So the next slide. Okay, another reason why you may want to use Perpetual is as a liquidity provider, but I would say this is not it's not it's not really suitable for the average person because as i mentioned before there's like a lot of risks um providing liquidity it's quite complicated but basically the the liquidity providers provide liquidity for traders to use up and then they earn a share of the trading fees so 80 percent of the trading fees go to liquidity liquidity providers and then 15 percent goes to token holders and then currently five percent goes to the foundation treasury but um yeah those parameters can change for a community vote so in the future, we could see like 20% going to token holders, 
0% to the treasury and then 80% still to makers. So liquidity is also incentivized with what we call pool party. So every week, um, anyone who provides liquidity on our platform, they earn OP and perp rewards. Just a bit about providing liquidity on perp. So it's similar to providing liquidity on Uniswap V3, but you can also take on leverage as well. So yeah, as I mentioned, like active trading, it can be quite difficult and perhaps it's not very suitable for the average person. And I'd say it's better suited to more sophisticated players, uh, market makers, or anyone who's familiar with, um, really familiar with Uniswap V3. Another way you can look at providing liquidity is similar to like selling options. So if you know a bit about options contracts, then yeah, it can get very complicated. And uh, the main risk is divergence loss. So that basically means when you start providing liquidity, um, you need to set a range order. So you want the price of the asset to remain in your range. So you keep earning fees. If, if the price exits that range, you no longer earn fees. But you also have what's called divergence loss, which means the value of the assets you're providing, uh, you're providing to the pool, it changes. So then you, you basically might have just been better off just holding Ethereum and USDC in a certain proportion, but because you're providing liquidity, uh, as the price of Ethereum goes up, you're actually se you're selling Ethereum to facilitate traders who want to go long. So, yeah, it's, there's there's ways to to hedge divergence loss. Um, so we have a video about this on our on our YouTube channel, and basically the way to hedge it is to because when you're providing liquidity, you're basically going short uh, volatility. You want the price not to be that volatile. You want to capture a lot of the uh, the fees from traders. Um, so yeah, you're basically going short volatility. So how you can hedge that risk is to, to have a strategy where you're long volatility. So how you can do that, you can do that with options. Um, you could do that with a straddle or a strangle strategy. And uh, it's explained a bit more in the video. But basically what you're doing is you're buying a call option and you're buying a put option. So when the price goes out of that range that you set as an LP, um, either one of those option contracts will make will make money basically. And then that should hedge, hedge the risk as well. But um, options, they can be complicated. And an easier way would be to uh, have, if, if you could have volatility futures. And actually, Deribit has an upcoming product that, that will do exactly that. So now I have a D, DVOL product. So basically, these futures will, will track the volatility of the market. And uh, that can allow you to hedge against impermanent loss, divergence loss, also known as. So another reason you might want to use Perpetual Protocol um, is as a builder or developer. So the protocol is fully open source and uh, we have a grants program as well. So if anyone can create like interesting applications or exciting applications on top of the protocol, then uh, we you can apply for a grant and then um, get funded as well to bring that idea into reality. So out of all DeFi projects, I think we've actually given out uh, we're actually at the top of all the DeFi projects in terms of how much we've given out in funding. So more than $1 million given out in funding to builders and developers. And the main focus right now um, is to fund developers who who have uh, ideas for like structured structured products uh, built on top of PERP to bring more volume to the exchange. Uh, so the next slide basically just shows our ecosystem map. Um, this just shows like all of our partners, uh, all of the grant recipients, and yeah, it's just uh, broken down by different areas. So there's accessibility, maker tools, uh, structured products, uh, security, and community as well. So continuing on with what people have built or what developers have built on top of the protocol. So in my opinion, this is one of the coolest examples. Um, it's a trading view strategy connector. So what it does is it allows anyone to automate trades um, using trading view strategies. So I don't know if you're familiar with the trading view website, but um, anyone can create strategies uh, so they can just like automate their trading. So, you know, they could use a particular uh, technical tool and then using PineScript, basically write a strategy and automate it. But what one builder has done that received the grant um, from us was basically they made a trading view connector. So you could connect that strategy to an account on Perpetual Protocol. 
And then what it does basically, you can just automate your strategy and earn money um, in an automated way. Um, the only thing you need actually though is a TradingView Pro account, which I think is like $30, $40 a month. But apart from that, it's basically accessible to anyone. And uh, yeah, it's a really cool way to automate um, your own strategies or even use other people's. So another project um, that received the grant and built a product was uh, PurpSim. So this is a tool for makers, so it's only really um, relevant to them. But basically what it shows is it, it's a backtesting and visualization, to, uh, visualiz visualization tool. So you can see like what's your liquidation price or how, mu how much fees you're going to earn by placing liquidity in a certain range. And then you can play around with those numbers and see uh, how much you could potentially earn and uh, also the liquidation prices of your liquidity position. So just a disclaimer, it's still in beta and uh, the team that built it, uh, they're known as Component Finance. Uh, they're actually seeking feedback from makers. So yeah, you just input a range order, the amount of collateral you have, and it shows you how much you can expect to earn. So now I'm gonna move on, like how to get involved in DeFi, a bit, a bit about that. So, Evangelists, they're a vital part of the ecosystem. Uh, pretty much all DeFi protocols have some sort of ambassador program. So Perp's version of that is Perp Evangelists, and they can earn Perp tokens for the work they do. So they can contribute to the protocol. Maybe they can create some content, uh, do some translation, host events, do some community building, or even community moderation uh, in our Discord. So yeah, here's, here's the link to our Perp Evangelist program. Um, there's more details there. Um, yeah, I'd highly encourage anyone to, to check it out. Um, maybe they want to get some experience or like do some part-time work in the space. But yeah, not, not just us, but you know, pretty much all other DeFi protocols have this sort of program. So if, you, if you're really particularly interested in, in one of those protocols, then I'd really recommend uh, looking up to see if they've got such an ambassador program and joining it. Uh, you know, you get your name out there as well and uh, build knowledge and uh, make, make connections as well. But yeah, here's some tips just from me on joining a DeFi project. Maybe it's quite obvious, but I'll go for it anyway. Um, yeah, so first thing I'd say would be like familiarize yourself with protocols you find interesting. Um, become an expert on, on a few and uh, don't spread yourself too thin. If you think about how many experts there are in crypto, uh, at this moment in time in the world. It's very, very small compared to say other subject areas because it's so new. So if you if you can become an expert in a certain protocol or a certain area, then you know you're not gonna have much competition. So I would also say like to cover the foundational knowledge, you know, like how blockchains work, Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, how stable coins work, how all made market makers work like Uniswap, Curve and Perp, money market protocols and then yield aggregators as well. I'd also say Discord is where it's happening, like for a lot of projects. So it's usually the best place to find opportunities, whether that's like bounties or the ambassador program or even job listings. It usually will go through Discord first before it goes out to the wider public. So it's, it's also a great place to learn more and uh, get, get involved as well. And then, yeah, network is your net worth. So network as much as possible. So this is like going to events, attending conferences, making friends in the industry, that sort of thing. Um, I'd say that's that's quite a, quite an important thing if you're really looking to to get involved in, in the industry more. So most people working in the space, you know, you can just like ask for the advice or introduce yourself, make yourself known, network with them. And then I'd also say, yeah, I already mentioned this, becoming an ambassador. But also it's important is like building your on-chain profile so this could be things like NFTs as certifications. So you could use this as part of your CV or part of a job as a job submission. So uh, two good examples are Alchemy. So they run courses. Um, so one of the courses like Ethereum development, if you're interested in programming uh, or smart contracts. And then basically once you complete the course, you get like an NFT as like a badge uh, for your completion. And then there's another one, uh, June Initiation, which is like a, for data analysis. Uh, doing data analysis with SQL and also I'd say build a GitHub profile even if you're not a developer because you can 
you can add pretty much or open source anything. So, you know, any scripts or any like uh, code for data analysis you could put up there, or even you might want to collect uh, a group of papers together that's related to a particular topic and uh, just upload it to your profile as like a, a bank of knowledge on a certain topic. So the future of on-chain derivatives. So this will be the last okay. section. So there's many different approaches being taken, um, but I don't think there's no clear winner yet. And I think most people will agree. Um, but I think this narrative is really yet to like really take off like on-chain derivatives. Um, most of the trading is still done on centralized exchanges. But I think it will take time for decentralized exchanges to really match centralized exchanges in terms of like features and uh, user, fr user friendliness. And then also a lot of things have happened in the past year or so, you know, uh, the lunar collapse, there was the mango markets incident. And I think following on from those events, there's going to be a greater focus across on-chain derivatives and DeFi in general um, on resilience and security. And then finally, I uh, just want to say the expansion of vaults as well is an important trend to keep an eye out for. So there's already so many vaults on the market and basically what they're doing is uh, packaging like on-chain strategies into a simplified and easy product to use for everyone. So you don't have to know like the strategies or execute them yourself. Basically, that's taken care of, uh, taken care of for you. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of like simplifying the entry point into on-chain derivatives so you don't have to be like a trader or like a really experienced trader to like take advantage of, of, of what's going on in, in this sector. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, thank you all for listening. Thanks for coming. Um, if there's any questions that anyone has, I'd be happy to answer them. But um, you can also learn more about Perp on the website uh, via our Twitter account uh, or our blog on Mirror and my email or, and my Twitter are there as well. So if you like a copy of the slides or have any questions or anything, just free feel, uh, free, feel free to reach out to me or contact me on Twitter. And yeah, that's it. Thanks very much.